these cells available off the shelf. They're derived from induced pluripotent stem cells, and so not only can we make them from one line, but we can make them to express the entire array of human genetic diversity, as well as disease. What's the market? We went and tested this market at the Association for Research in Vision and Ophthalmology back in May. We had a booth there where we talked to uh, attendees at the meeting. There are over 11,000 from academic, clinical, and industrial vision science. What we found was that the com that a wide variety of companies were interested in our product. These included Genentech, Novartis, Regeneron, Sanofi. The cost of our product on a unit basis, which would be $750 to $1,100, was well tolerated by the people we spoke to. Um, academic lab heads indicated that they would use between one and two units a month or 12 to 24 per year and pharmaceutical companies indicated that if they were interested in our product they would buy between 5 and 30 for assay development and up to a thousand units for drug screens. The result of this is that we predict annual sales to academic researchers at half a million a year and to pharma of well over three million dollars a year. What's our competition? There isn't any. Although there are other companies like Axol, CDI, and Applied Stem Cell Technologies that currently sell IPS or induced pluripotent stem cell derived cells, none of them sell RPE and in fact none of them sell cell types that are from the eye, which is our niche. Uh, our other competition, of course, would include researchers and companies doing it themselves. There are very few and of course the accepted cell lines are dropping out of favor. So what's the risk? Not much. Our business model, we're bootstrapping it. We've already generated between a seed round and loans enough money to build a production facility and we're ready to make sales. We even have inventory. Market timing, perfect. Nobody else is making IPS RPE and the journals don't want to publish the cell lines that exist. Everybody's hungry for an alternative. Market size, we need one-tenth. That's one-tenth of the U.S. market to be profitable. Anything more than that, uh, <laughs> icing on the cake. Financially speaking, we've been through the seed round, like I said, and we have licenses or will shortly with everybody we need to have future IP. But where do we go from here? It's a single cell type. Well, like CDI, which is a hundred plus million dollar company, Legion Laboratories is going to expand its line of offerings. We're not only going to offer additional cell types though, but all of the materials you need to support that. That includes tissue culture media, antibodies, and kits for specific assays, and we'll provide custom assistance to pharmaceutical companies who are looking to develop new drug screens. Last, we're interested in entering the cell therapy market. Our production line will allow us to set up the GMT line we need to get into cell therapy, and these cells are already being tested for treatment of dry AMD. Questions? If, if you're ready to make sales, why are you not making sales? Dotting I's and crossing T's on a couple of license agreements. That, that sounds like a red flag for giant IP issues that are not resolved. I, I won't go there, but it, it's not as, what it sounds like. So if the technology's out there, would that one risk be that somebody else just up and makes their own IPSC, RPE cells and competes with you? How hard would that be? It takes a long time and a lot of work to do it. One of the things that we've done is optimize for commercial scaling, which nobody else really has done. Um, my knowledge of what's going on in this field is the reason it hasn't entered the marketplace is our proprietary technology that allows us to scale growth of the cells commercially where others don't. Is, is this more of an, an art and, and not patent protected? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. People standing near the back, you can go ahead and find a seat up here. There are seats if you want to come down. Next up, we have Ambient Clinical Analytics. All right. technical issue, but I'll work through it. Uh, I'm Al Burning, CEO of Ambient Clinical Analytics, and uh, we, we've licensed uh, over a thousand rules and algorithms from the Mayo Clinic that run the ICUs, emergency departments, and other critical care areas, and they provide clinical decision support tools across those areas. Uh, we've been in business about two years, and it's great to see the uh, um, enthusiasm for entrepreneurship. This is my fourth company. 
And uh, 15 years ago when we started, there were two or three groups in Rochester, now there's dozens, so it's, so it's uh, fantastic to see. Um, the the uh, tools that we provide are, are in, in place to uh, quickly assimilate the data and uh, allow the uh, clinicians to put the data into a form that's usable for them. And the, uh, the, the key of it in this partial slide is that uh, it'll, it'll allow the clinicians to uh, address what's going on with that particular patient and then make it a, a quick decision and treat that decision. And as an example, we're in most EMR and data record systems, a clinician will have to click 18 to 20 times to uh, get to that particular decision. In this case, they see it immediately when it, when it presents itself to that particular uh, to, to that particular clinician. The uh, business model is our, our uh, tools are sold on a per bed per month basis. We're, we're a SaaS model and it ranges from $400 per bed for the flagship product to $50 per bed for the uh, sepsis product. And it's, we're, we're currently uh, in, in uh, uh, shipment mode post FDA clearance because, because we are detecting uh, conditions and alerting clinicians to it makes it a class two medical device. So we went through 510K clearance last year, got the release and started ramping up the uh, sales process. Uh, it, a, a best example to talk about, and given the slide uh, deck here, I'll just uh, focus on sepsis as the uh, key indicator. Se sepsis is, is uh, an easy uh, condition to talk about because every, every hospital in the U.S is uh, working to improve their sepsis treatment protocol. It costs the U.S. over $20 billion a year through CMS to uh, treat sepsis. And in the case of uh, just you know, seeing the news, just in the last several months, Patty Duke, some of you remember, died of sepsis. Uh, uh, Muhammad Ali had a lot of medical conditions, but he specifically died of sepsis. 25% of people that get sepsis die from sepsis. And it's a, it is the second most costly condition. So the, the tool that the Mayo clinicians developed searches all the electronic medical, medical record data and then will provide an alert when the conditions for sepsis exist. And then the second step will be it'll kick into an immediate four-hour timestamp protocol. And the requirement for that, for that particular protocol is to make sure that those steps, which include antibiotics, additional fluids, are done in that, in that four-hour period. If they are, the patient has the best chance of not only surviving, but uh, has the best chance of not having any other, any other medical damage from, from sepsis. So from a business model standpoint, we, we see this market as a uh, plus $2 billion market, and that's correlating against it for, uh, performance management uh, tools that are used in other industries. And that's one of, the, one of the beauties of this particular tool. It's very similar to what was used in technology industries and financial industries for de detecting conditions and getting them out there and fixing them. And it's the same thing that we're doing now. And it's only it's late to the medical industry, but it's not too late. So it's, it's fun to be in that process. We, we are in a, a currently in a 1.5 million offering round. We raised 2 million last year to get through the FDA clearance process. And uh, we're ramping from here. So questions? So what does your sales process look like? Is it an enterprise type? Big it's, it's an enterprise sale. The, the tool bolts on to the electronic medical record system. We're agnostic. It could be a Cerner system, Epic system, a Kesson system. And we, we have a small direct sales team. And then we've also partnered with some, some large resellers, Philips, Lido, uh, Brandex locally. So we've got a, a combination model. And uh, Philips announced that the uh, HIMSS electronic medical show uh, uh, last month, they had 88 million hits on the website for the press release. So Philips is out there in full force uh, worldwide, and uh, the others are ramping up as well. So when do you start selling, and do you have predictions for how many you'll sell in the first year? Our, our, our objective is to sell 10 to 15 systems this year. Philips has sold the first system. It's, there's an average ARR per system of 10,000. So we need eight to ten to get to break even. Uh, we we have we're in the planning process with our direct team for uh, for two sales. And then we have 30 proposals out there that we expect to close three to five more within the next two months. So you're just starting to sell now, and you have not closed any sales yet, correct? But Phillips has closed a sale, and then we, we have two verbals that we're in the process of doing the planning for. And what's the value of the sale you closed? The, the Phillips sale, we're estimating at 125000 ARR. Of, of the proposals we have in place, they're all between uh, 25 to 150 per year, average of uh, 100.
Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Life engineer up. This one working? Okay, cool. Hi, I'm Jared Campbell, co-founder of Life Engine, and we make kits to make gene editing super simple. 